Hi guys, it's Claris, and today I'm going to do a, another Christmas tutorial, and this is going to be a, um, a Christmas wreath. And to start off, I am going to show you the colors I'm using. It's going to be a brown, a light green, a red, and a dark green. And the brushes I will be using are the silver black velvet in four and a regular eight. Um, I would recommend a six as well if you have one. Um, you know what? I should get my six. Give me a second. All right, so I have that right here. It actually says eight, but it's clearly a lot smaller than the eight. So that will suffice. I just wanted something slightly smaller in size. I have my water ready. I have my little paper towel ready and we're good to go. Now to begin with, we're gonna use my popular Starbucks cup. If you watched the previous video, you know the story behind this. I went to get a cup of coffee and uh, with the whole controversy about Starbucks, Starbucks um, not having a Christmas tree on their cups anymore, it was a nice surprise to see this underneath it. I'm not sure if it was the barista, I'm assuming it was the barista who took the time to drew this, but it's such a rebellious Christmas thing to do. I love it. Anyways, we're gonna use this to create a circle and I have a pencil. So I'm just gonna center it as best as I can and do my circle lightly. There we go. And now uh, we're going to start off with the with the green. And what I'm going to be doing is creating the green foliage, but I'll be making it um, almost like the, the leaves should be going in one direction. So if I do a branch this way, it's just going to keep on extending all the way around. So it's going to give that nice um, circular motion look to it. So starting off with my dark green, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know what? Um, I am going to mix the green with the brown on my palette, which I'm going to have right here for you to look at. And let's create that as the center first. So I have that nice green going on and I love this like foresty looking green. So I'm just going to start off with the center and just do a circle. And it doesn't have to be, um, what's the word, perfect. It can be uneven if you wish. And I'm just going to close the circle. Okay, and then I am going to take the six or the eight, whatever you want to choose and just with just water on it I'm just going to touch the edges all the way around and the reason I'm doing this is because I want that color to be bleeding as opposed to just straight now some of the areas are already dry so it won't bleed as much but I want it to bleed and I'm fine with you know some of it bleeding and the others not so let's just leave it at that or I can always go in and add some green here and hope that it bleeds off to the sides whatever you can cheat a little so you decide all right so now that I have this I'm gonna go back into my green where is my green that I just mixed up for you guys, oh right here. And now I'm gonna start creating the leaves or the branches, which are going to go, I'll start off with the top and they're gonna go like this. And then you just want to create 
tiny little it's it's pretty much just doing a whole bunch of lines that's what this whole tutorial is going to be about you're going to be creating a whole bunch of branches and then a whole bunch of lines on it to give it that Christmassy foliage okay and you just need to make sure that your tip is narrow and you're getting that nice little tapered edge to it otherwise you lose all of that if you if you go on too hard and you know like you lose the detail is what I'm trying to say and then I'm going to um, dab in some of my darker green um, or the brighter green rather and just create some additional ones so if they bleed in that's nice so then it kind of looks like it's all together essentially this whole tutorial will be as just creating these these little branches like I mentioned before and you can switch between the variant of the dark green and this lighter foresty kind of green so um, because you've kind of seen already what that looks like I'm gonna try and forward this video so it can be a time-lapse and you're not kind of sitting there and just looking at something that you know or waiting for me to finish once I've shown it to you. So let me pause and do a time lapse. All right, so we're back. So this is essentially what it would look like. Uh, you can actually go in and do a lot more if you want to and just add more variations of the green uh, and just make it like a thicker, a thicker wreath um, and foundation. Um, but the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in um, some additional green leaves which look like I guess the mistletoe leaves uh, and this is just to kind of add a variation to this already uh, Christmassy looking pine leaves I guess you could say um, so just finishing the last bit there and so now for that I'm going to mix in some of the light green and add it to the green that I already have going on here and We'll just make sure that it's not as potent as the rest of the green that we have and we want to do something like this so it's just like your basic leaf and you want to just add it here and there or everywhere like that and I'm going to add some here
and there. And I'm good with that. I think I might add in some detail to the leaves by just taking in some brown and just giving it a center. You don't have to if you want to just kind of leave the leaves that way. Or if you have enough white in between to kind of show the spine, you're good too. Um, it's just something I want to do. So, um, this is good. I just thought to add a little bit of variation in the leaf color, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, again, it's just something I'm doing. You don't have to do it. It's a preference or a choice, rather. And now I think we're ready to go in and do the red. And for the red, I'm going to use my number six. And I'm just going in straight for the red. And I will do my little red berries here and there. Feel free to touch leaves that are already or still damp. Um, so then the color kind of seeps in. I always like it. It looks integrated and fun and definitely like a cool watercolor piece. So I'm just going to be doing this all over where I see fit. And uh, the reason I'm using this brush is because I find the tip of these regular brushes are a lot harder and that's what I need when I'm doing circular motion so it doesn't bend suddenly and then I get like this weird shape that I'm not looking for. <clears throat> Compared to the silver black velvet, that's what I was comparing it to. In case you guys weren't sure what I was meaning. I like leaving a little white in the centers as well because it just shows like, ooh, the berries are glistening. But And also because it's like a loose watercolor style, so I'm going to keep with that theme. So I like this. I really like how this is turning out. I don't know what you guys think. Tell me in the comments. There's something so relaxing about not only doing watercolor, but just seeing the paint get on the sheet. That it's an instant de-stressor, at least for me. I'm doing some that's like slightly out It's because I I like the edges to be a little bit like 
it's concentrated in the middle and then it kind of tapers out. So that's the kind of effect I normally like in my paintings. Oops, sorry. So now I'm going to go back in and do a little more of these pine stuff on top of the the already laid out green and this is just to darken it and make it look thicker. So this time I'm just going to go in straight with the with the green, the dark green. And getting like a good amount I'm just going to create a few strands of leaves here and there. Here and there seems to be my go-to phrase, doesn't it? I say that a lot, at least in the last two tutorials at least. Quite a bit. Just apply color here and there, add some dots here and there, sprinkle some stuff here and there. I know. But the layering of these different variations of leaves and color just add that 3D multi-dimensional look to your artwork. So never shy away from it uh, unless you feel like it is ripping your paper apart. Then obviously you're overdoing it. But when it's dried and you're kind of going in with more detail like this, it, it's kind of nice. I'd like to think so. Just gonna add some that extend on the outside too. And I want it to be darker than the green there, so just added a little bit of brown to it. some over there as well and there and here So this could actually be time-lapsed as well, but um, because I feel like I'm almost done, I'm not going to do that. And I'm hoping you guys are enjoying watching me do this. As I'm concentrating really hard <laughs> to even things out and just reach a point where I am pleased and I can stop. So, but I think essentially you get the idea of what you can do and how you can proceed to do a wreath that you like and you will be happy with. So this is this is how I would do it. Um, if you want to do little cones, 
Um, that's also a really cute idea. What I would do is I normally take, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this now that it's so saturated with items, but I take a little bit of brown and I'm just going to, just to show you, there's a lot happening here already, but um, let's go off on this side. So I'm just going to create like a, like a shape that looks like a cone. And I'm going to do that all around in random areas. I'll do one here as well. And then skirts at the top. Just a hint of one, maybe it's like behind the leaf or something. Then another one here. So you can spread it out any which way you feel comfortable. And this is just the base though, okay? So we're doing it with this color for the base. And then we're gonna go in and do a darker color for the detail. I'm just adding hints of this color in between as well so it looks like there are some cones there. All right, so that's good. And now I'm going to use a dark brown. Um, let me just get that dark brown. All right, so I have my dark brown here. And I'm just gonna get a good amount of it onto my brush. And then I just want to go and just kind of, okay, so these are not fully dried. Well, this one isn't. Um, but you don't want to paint the whole thing. You just kind of want to create like little, almost like little dots on it and then let it, let the watercolor do the work of it um, blending in with the other color that you have. And you want the edges to look like how the cones would look. And how you achieve that is just making sure that you go a little bit out of the edge from the mustard yellow color or the lighter brown that you have on there. All right, and there we go. So this is the beauty of loose watercolor. You can just overlap colors and just, you instantly get the idea of what it's supposed to be. And yep, I love it. I hope you guys are loving this too. Um, not just the cones, but just the whole loose watercolor because it's, relaxing to do and pretty to look at and really like leaves you with that <clears throat> sense of fulfillment like you've actually achieved something I know it does for me at least all right so that's my cone these are my cones so this is my take on how you do the Christmas wreath. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. And um, as I've mentioned before, please do feel free to write in the comments, ask any questions. I love saying hi to you guys. I love seeing your work. Um, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. And again, just love seeing your work and hearing from you guys.